Hi, this is Tim Von Rieden with cgcookie.com, and in today's tip tutorial, I will be taking you through how to create a bullet brush that can be used sequentially or flying gracefully in the air. I will also drop the brush to be downloaded and free to use however you may like. Okay, let's get started. So in Photoshop, I created a new image that was less than 2500 pixels, and that is because in Photoshop, their brush settings only allow them to go up to 2500 pixels. So if you make an image that is larger than that, it won't let you define the brush preset. So you can see, we're just under, so I'm going to choose OK. Now rather than trying to freehand this entire bullet shell, I'm going to be using the polygonal lasso tool. And now I'm making sure that I'm on a new layer, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So this is a point and click selection tool, and if you hold shift, it'll give you that nice clean edge. Then for reference, I just went to Google Image, and I typed in 50 caliber bullet shell and a blank, and I found a bunch of references right away. So it was really easy to get a good size reference for me to look at. So you can see I only did one half, and that's because I want the other side to replicate um, the other side perfectly. I don't want to try to eye it out and line it up. So I'm going to go ahead and fill it in with black. And then I'm going to deselect it with Command-D. And now I have that on its own layer. So now I'm going to copy it, Command-A, copy, or I'm going to select it all with Command-A, copy it with Command-C, and then paste it with Command-V. And then from there, I want to flip it. So if I go to Edit, Transform, Flip Horizontal. So from here, I can go ahead and then line it up. Okay, so now I want to merge that layer down into the first one, so that's all on one single layer. And to do that, I can choose on the top layer and do Command-D. If I go to Layer, I can choose Merge Down. So now it is on one layer. And now from here, I want to uh, round out the top and the bottom just to give it some perspective. So right on the layer itself, I'm just going to give it a little half circle on the top and then a little half circle on the bottom. And I don't have to worry about it looking perfect because these are going to be seen from um, farther away. Do you want it looking clean enough where it doesn't look like jagged or anything like that? But I don't have to go crazy in depth detail. And I'm also trying to make the two half circles that I'm adding pretty much be the same angle and uh, um, length as each other. Something like that. I'm gonna make sure I get on that back edge as well. Okay, so now from here, I'm gonna try to give it a little bit um, of value using grays. So I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm going to mask this layer out. So to do that, I hold Command, and I click on that layer, and I'll, it'll select everything that is in that layer. So every brush stroke that I did in here is selected. And if I choose the Mask um, tool, which is the rectangle with the white circle in it, you can see how it will mask it out. So now if I choose the original layer, and then I use a soft edge brush. And instead of black, I'm going to be using a softer gray. And I'm just going to go ahead and go right down the center of this. So I'm just giving it a basic rounded out um, value. And since the bullet shell itself has a reflective surface to it, that's what I'm trying to represent with the shading. Like I said before, I'm not trying to go too detailed because you got to keep in mind that this is going to be a brush. So I want this to be able to um, stand next to another one without it 
really being over detailed and it will just look like a copied brush over and over. I want it to be very plain and basic looking. And since this is a bullet shell rather than just the bullet, the top might be a little darkened from actually being used. Something like that. And now that I like um, how the value's looking, I'm going to merge this layer down into the, the black silhouette layer so that we are only dealing with one layer. To do that, I'm going to merge it down, which is Command-E, but it's also on Layer, Merge Down. So now I have my bullet on a single layer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to blur the edges out a little bit. And if I wanted to, I could go over here to my Blur tool. But um, a quicker fix would just be going to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. And keeping it around 2 to 3, then choose OK. And it'll just be um, less of a crisp edge that will stand out too much. Um, I'd rather have a softer edge. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and find my brush preset to create my brush. So I'm going to go ahead and keep it as bullet brush. Choose OK. If I open my brush settings, which if you don't have this down here, you can go to Window and make sure Brushes is selected. And when it's checked off, it'll pop up down here. So right now, if I choose that bullet brush I just created, you can even see in the preview, it's just going to create a black um, vertical line, and we don't want that. What we do want is the bullets to actually show up. So to do that, if I go to Brush Tip Shape, and where it says Spacing, just increase it, and you can start to see the bullets form. Now for this one, I'm going to do the sequential brush. So now if I lay them out, see how they are lined up in sequential to each other, or in sequence. So that is exactly what I wanted for that one, so I'm going to go ahead and save that. For the ones of them flying in the air, i got to do a little bit more at, um, brush preset editing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on shape dynamics and you can already see the effect that it's having, but we don't want that. We want the minimum diameter to be a little larger so that the size variants are more in range of each other. And I'm also going to be turning on my angle jitter, and that's so that they start to turn randomly. So you can see how that looks. But you can see how they're also colliding and intersecting with each other, which is something we don't want. So to change that, I'm going to go to my brush tip shape again, and I'm going to increase the spacing. Enough where they're not touching each other. So if I go back into shape dynamics, you can see how the harder I press on the tablet, it just goes smaller to larger. And while that's kind of nice, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my size jitter so that it is a little bit more random and less defined. And then from there, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my scattering as well. You can see without the scatter, it's very much in a line, and we don't want that. We want it to have a little bit more of a random look. So I'm going to turn up my scattering quite a bit. You can see the effect it has. Yeah, I like that. So there we go. And then if you wanted to edit some things, all you would have to do is go into these brush settings. And if you wanted them to be really far away to really big, just turn down that minimum diameter. And then you can get some really far away to close up effects. But for this, I'm going to put it somewhere around here. I'm going to save it out. So just like before, I'm going to choose on that blue um, rectangle with the black arrow. Choose a little post-it note, which will save it. And I'm just going to name these flying. Choose OK. So now we have our flying brush, or our flying bullet shells, and then the sequential bullet shells. So there we go. Um, I hope these prove useful to you, and I will put these not only in the download source files, but uh, in the a link in the 
comment section as well. So I hope you learned something and thanks for watching.